I enjoy watching other people work, especially those who do their jobs very well and seem to enjoy doing them, no matter how difficult or undesirable the job may seem to others. And I'd like to tell you the story of one such person. When I worked in New York, there was a restaurant, Shelley's, across the street from my office where you could get, believe it or not, two eggs and toast for 29 cents. I th that's a long time ago. <laughs> I thought this was such a good deal and that it paid me to take an earlier train into the city and have breakfast there before going to the office. Besides, I loved watching their cook, Tiny. He was a big, burly guy who presided over an open four-burner gas stove, much like the kind my grandmother had in the basement for heating the wash water. On the back burner was a large pot of boiling water into which he dipped a smaller pan when he had orders for boiled or poached eggs, which he finished on the other back burner. On the two front burners, which were going full blast all the time, he had two small iron skillets for cooking eggs fried over easy omelets, scrambled or whatever. To his left was a stack of crates of eggs and on a table to his right a pot of melted butter to slosh into the frying pans and a bank of toasters and a variety of breads. On a shelf above him were plates and bowls and above that a mirror so that people sitting at the counter behind him could watch him work. I don't know whether you can picture this, but think of, of me as tiny, but I've got my back to you, and I'm doing all this stuff, and the mirror's up there, and you're sitting at the U-shaped counter out there, and over there, there's some tables, okay? Now, tiny stood there for hours, his feet rooted to the same spot, while his arms were in constant motion, cooking the eggs, making the toast, putting it on the plates, the orders came fast and constant, and he never broke pace. He was like a perpetual motion machine. But the most amazing thing was that no orders were ever written. The place seated about 80 customers, most of whom were in and out quickly. They were served by about 12 waitresses who continuously called out orders from all corners of the room. Sometimes they called out what was wanted, like over easy with rye down or poached in a cup with English on the side. But often they just called names. Sarah, Dr. G just came in. Irma's here with Harry. These were regular customers who liked the same thing every day, and Tiny knew what they wanted. Now think about this. Here's Tiny, standing for hours before a hot stove, hearing this constant babble of orders and names, none of which is written. He has to know what each name wants, remember the orders in the order in which they're called out, prepare the food, and set it out. I went there nearly three years and I never saw him miss. The waitresses swooped by and picked up their orders, always ready right when they expected them to be, always done just the way the customers wanted. It took an average of five minutes to get served after you came in and your order was called. It was poetry in motion. Now it doesn't sound like much fun for Tiny, does it? Then one day, I saw him leaving the restaurant just after 11 in the morning, and I told him how much I appreciated his skill. But I asked him, don't you get tired of just standing over that hot stove cooking eggs? Oh no, he said. This is the most wonderful job in the world. I can't think of anything else I would rather be doing. You see, there are a lot of lonely people in New York people who live in small rooms and eat their meals out alone. Then there are people who are going to jobs that they don't like. They're looking forward to a miserable day. They come in for breakfast and I make them eggs just the way they like them, cooked to order. 
I show them that someone cares about them and can give them something that they can depend on being good. I figure every day I help about 300 people start the day off right. I make their life just a little better. Now how many people can say that? Besides, I only work five hours from 6 to 11. Then I go home and have lunch with my wife and kids. I'm home when the kids come home from school, so I get to spend a lot of time with them, and I have most of the day to myself to do what I want to do. How could you find a better job than that? Clearly, Tiny saw his job as a labor of love.